Hey crew, it's Mike with Riding in the Ozarks. And a couple months ago, I did a video on my first impressions of the sports dress. And I said I was going to do a full ride review. Well, it's been a few months and I was going back and thinking about that video and what I really thought about the sports dress. And I've changed my mind. There's been lots of videos on it. I've even watched a few with varying opinions on the sports dress. And I went back and I listened to my first impressions. I want to go back over some of those and some of my concerns and what I thought was adequate, but I think I've got a solution how we can make it better. I want to show you the Sportster S that I think Harley Davidson should have built and how it could be done, how anybody could customize a Sportster S to end up with my concept. Let's go back and listen to what I thought about that sports dress the day I wrote it. First, we're going to address my initial concerns, the, the things I really wanted to test and check out on. If you guys watched my video where I compared it to the FTR, um, I talked about the suspension and the brakes being my biggest concerns. Suspension and brakes. The brakes were good. I mean, better than I expected. Better than I expected. Better than I expected for a single front disc brake. Better than I expected for a single front disc brake. Going back and thinking about it and the other bikes I've ridden, I think a lot of this comes down to perspective. I ride a Harley Davidson touring bike. I rode other Harley Davidsons. Most of my perspective comes from those class of motorcycles. Now I have rode an FTR 1200 and a few other bikes and the FTR 1200 had really good brakes. Okay, let's see what else I thought about this bike. Now the other thing was the suspension, it's firm. The suspension is firm, especially in the rear, but it doesn't bottom out all the time, even though it's got a couple inches of travel. Firm and firm and not bottoming out, but firm. Uh, and I didn't expect the suspension to be good. The stock configuration has 3.6 inches of travel in the front and two inches of travel in the rear. Well, that would be why it's pretty firm. What else did I say about the sports dress that day that's of significance? Let's talk about the seating position. Yo, know, it says it's got forward controls, but I actually felt like, because you sit so far forward and kind of aggressive, leaning forward over the tank, I felt like I was sitting in a mid-control position, even though they're forward controls, but a pretty comfortable mid-control. I wasn't cramped up like some of the mid-controls, uh, but I wasn't stretched out like I would expect from a forward control. So the forward controls, even though that's what they are, are more like a comfortable mid. Okay, so ergonomics. Foot position I was okay with, but I did mention leaning over the tank. And and I've heard that in some other videos, some complaints about that, the uncomfortable, the leaning forward too much. I do think that as this bike gets into the market, there's going to be a lot of complaints about the suspension in particular, the brakes maybe a little, the ergonomics some. But I think I've got a way to fix all that. So let's take a look at it. So this is what the stock Sportster S looks like in white. Uh, this is a completely stock configuration image. First thing I thought about was how would I make this thing a little more comfortable and tolerable so I could ride it. Channel I watch occasionally called Rocket Man rode this bike and he really had a problem with being hunkered over on it. And so that kind of struck me as a, a thing that's going to, you know, maybe bother quite a few riders. So let's fix that. I put apes on it. Now these are basically the mini apes off of an Iron 1200 that I've, uh, you know, digitally imposed on this photo. And um, I didn't think that looked too bad, but it didn't quite seem to fit the bike to me. And although I don't have a bike with T-bars, I know several people run T-bars on road glides and other bikes and they really like them. And you can get T-bars that are taller and, you know, put a little pull back in them. So let's see what that would look like. So this is a, you know, basically the stock handlebar. I've just extended it straight up on the same trajectory as the uh, front forks kind of. And, you know, it, it's not perfect. I just made this image. I, I think that's what I would like to see in handlebars. If you, if you sit in a chair and you lean forward and you put your hands down on the desktop, and then you raise your hands up with keeping your back at the same angle, just three inches, and then tilt back a couple inches. Well, you know, that's not that much. That's four or five inches of change, and it makes a significant difference in your posture sitting in a chair. And I think that would help this bike a lot. So that's kind of the bars we're gonna stick with going forward in my concept. What I think 
I would feel comfortable with and that would fit a lot of other people and that yet people who have T-bars say they have great control and great feel of the bike still. So now the next thing is the stopping power. So everybody, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but I didn't think it was great. And some of the other people that have reviewed the bike who, for example, Rocket Man comes from riding, a, I think a, I think it's a Street Twin and a Trident 660 before that, and he's rode several other bikes. He didn't think the brakes were very good. Now, he has a different perspective. He's coming from other bikes than I'm coming from. I'm coming from mostly Harleys and Indian Cruisers outside of the FTR, and I thought they were good. I thought they were good enough. I thought they were good for a single disc brake. But that doesn't mean they're great, and that doesn't mean they're good compared to other motorcycles. So, being objective, I thought, well, how do we fix this? And the fact that this thing's only got 3.6 inches of travel, that's another concern. So, in this image here, I have put the front suspension on here, a different inverted front fork that's got a little more travel on it, and a dual disc brake configuration. Now, this is the, the standard you know harley davidson looking brake it's not the brembo radial mounted that's actually on this bike uh, ideally you would want that on both sides and you just would go to a disc brake with a little longer fork uh with so you get a little more travel take that from about 3.6 to 4.5 is what i'm looking at in this image now the next thing i would do of course you can't just you know extend the front and not extend the rear a little bit and and the rear suspension is a real problem at two inches of travel so we dropped that rear wheel down a little bit. So in this image, I've pivoted that swing arm down to what I think would give us about another inch of travel in the rear suspension. Going from two inches to three inches, that's a 50% gain, especially in an area this bike really needs more suspension. Oh, by the way, the other thing I did in this image was I cut that god-awful mud guard rear flap license plate tail light holder thing off the back. That was freaking hideous. There's an easy way to fix that. I'm sure our friends at Custom Dynamics can do it. Here's an image of a light bar they put underneath the rear fender of a Fat Bob. I don't see any reason you couldn't do the same thing on this bike. This is kind of my, my first draft at this bike. I left it with the fat tires. I essentially just changed out the bars, which is pretty typical with Harley Davidson. It's, it's, it's something I expect to be able to see coming down the road for these new bikes. I, I don't know that we'll see it right out of the gate. Maybe it'll be a year from now, but I think that'll happen. Uh, we put dual disc on it. We got a little more travel in the front. We got a little more travel in the rear. That's also going to lift the bike up about an inch, but maybe an inch and a half. But this bike only had 3.6 inches of ground clearance, so four and a half inches isn't going to kill us seat height on this bike is 29.6 unladen so an inch inch and a half is still going to put us at that 31 inches or less i think that's going to be fine for most people i don't think that hurts us having more ground clearance is probably actually going to give us more lean angle even for this bike so this is what i would like to call my fat tire concept that's that's the white bike here we're going to call that the fat tire concept now I decided I wanted to try to do something even a little more radical with this. So let's take a look at this. So here we have the stock Sportster S in black. We're gonna start with this. And we're gonna do a little changing now. So I looked into it and the front shocks on the Sportster S are 43 millimeter. I did a little searching to see what other Harley Davidson's had 43 millimeter inverted front forks and the Roadster that they did away with a few years ago has those. So I took the wheels and the front shocks off of a Roadster, which is also dual disc brakes, and I stuck it on this black bike, and I stuck a Roadster-style rear wheel in the back just to kind of match up because it's a, narrow, a little narrower tire. So here we have the Roadster front suspension, which is an inverted fork. This is going to get us four and a half inches of travel, dual disc brakes. We're going to have uh, the same style wheel on the back with not as big a tire not the fat tire deal that the, is on the stock sports dress uh, i already stripped that rear light off the back of it in this image and then of course we, we got to have some bars so i went back to the t-bar look so this is my concept in black for the sportster s with a roadster front end a roadster rear wheel in the back you know gives us a little more suspension and travel and some t-bars on it and I have to say, after looking at this and playing with these images for several hours, 
This is my favorite. This is the one I really like. So I want to know what you guys think. Here's the fat tire concept. And here is the Roadster tire concept. So let me know. Do you think Harley Davidson got it right? Is there nothing wrong with the Sportster S the way it is? Or do you think that maybe my fat tire concept might be an improvement? Or do you dig the Roadster style concept that I came out with? Let me know in the comments down below which one you like. I hope you like this video. It was fun to do, fun to make these images. Um, instead of just coming out with the problems, I thought this time we'd try and come out with some solutions. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. If you like my concepts and you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up because that really helps with the algorithm on YouTube so that other people see this video. You can even share it out on social media. If this video gets out enough, maybe somebody from Harley Davidson would actually see these concepts and maybe they'd make some improvements to the sports dress based on the feedback and your comments below. Or maybe I'm just all wet and it's just fine the way it is. You guys let me know what you think. Don't forget to check out the content on my channel. And if you dig it, hit that subscribe button down below. It's free after all. And, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you for your support. A big shout out to the members on my channel. I hope you guys are enjoying early access to the videos. And you all stay safe and keep on riding.